Would you join your hearts with mine in prayer? Open our ears, O God, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills that we may serve you today and always. Amen. <clears throat> you know, last Sunday when I got up here to do the welcome and I looked around, the meeting house was exceptionally full. And I thought to myself, goodness, there's a, a lot of people here in worship this morning. And then I thought, what are they all doing here? <laughs> well, you know, it's summer. You know, it's, it's not Easter. It's not Christmas. It wasn't even a special Sunday, and there's no pool here. <laughs> And then I thought, oh, oh, I can think of some reasons why people are here. Maybe they were asked to read the scripture. Or they're a greeter. Or they're a deacon, so they have to be here. <laughs> or they're in the choir and they don't want to let each other down. Or their parents or their partner told them they had to come. Or It's Sunday, and on Sunday morning you go to church. Oh, I know. You love the music and you couldn't wait to hear my sermon. <laughs> I'm teasing a little bit. But the reality is, all of us have a reason or reasons why we come to church. And as I pondered why we come to worship, I had three thoughts. Either we're searching for something, or we found something, or both. And then I realized that the scripture that I had already selected for this Sunday kind of looked at that. Why it is that we're here on a hot Sunday morning in the summer. But before we go into that, first I want to talk a little bit about the phrase that is recurrent in the scripture, Kingdom of Heaven. The definition of Kingdom of Heaven or Kingdom of God is the spiritual realm over which God reigns. So that's the earth, that's us, that's our environment, the world. Now, some people believe the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are referring to different things, but they're not. The New Testament talks about the kingdom of God a lot. Matthew had a thing for kingdom of heaven. It's just a choice of words. And many people, though, were taught that the kingdom of heaven is the afterlife. But that's not what Jesus said. It isn't different from the kingdom of God. And here's what Jesus said in Luke. He said, once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. It is here, now, present. So I am one of those Christians that believes the kingdom of God is now, in this realm. And so that means that the fundamental task of the church, Big C, is to help bring forth the kingdom of God. And for us to think of the kingdom of God as some future event kind of misses the point of much of the New Testament, not to mention, this is just me, to make the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven about some afterlife, and like this is just a warm-up, I don't like that idea. I want this to be the kingdom of God. I want this to be the fruition in the realm of God, now, today. And also, in the version that is in the bulletin, there's not a typo, it doesn't say kingdom of God, it says kingdom of God. Kingdom is a more egalitarian or gender inclusive phrase. It's not about king up here, it's all of us. And so when I think of kin, I think of family, and so I think of the kingdom of God. 
the kingdom of God, the family of God. That's all of us. And so going to the reading, we know that Jesus taught in parables. And there's a lot of interpretations of why Jesus used parables. One of the reasons is the people could understand them because he used examples out of everyday life. But he also upended the meaning sometimes to make them even more engaging. It troubled some of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but the people got it. He used everyday examples, and we see them in the parables today. And we heard five parables in rapid succession in this reading, all of them about the kingdom of heaven. So what do they have in common, and how do they relate to the original question of why are you all here? Have you found something? Are you searching for something, or both? Well, the first one you all know, the mustard seed. That's the picture on the cover of the bulletin. It was proverbially thought of as the smallest seed. It really wasn't. The cypress seed was actually smaller. But they, they accidentally got planted. They were mixed in with the other seeds. And, but they grew, didn't they, from the smallest seed to these enormous trees, 15 feet high, branches as thick as your arm. So they grew from the smallest to the biggest. And that was an example that the disciples really needed to hear in that day and age, that something small can grow to be something big. And don't we all need that as well, that something good can grow to be even better? It's an important message about community, about finding something, about being a part of something. It can start small, and it can grow a community, a family. And then they gave the example of leaven. Now, we think of leaven in a good way, in bread. But in ancient times, leaven was considered kind of evil. It didn't have a positive connotation. And so it really was a stunning example that Jesus used. But the idea was that leaven could transform. It changes things, whether out in the open or silently. Isn't that about searching and about finding, about being transformed, whether as an individual, as a community, as a nation? And how often do we, is there a kindness or a gift or a grace that happens unseen and unknown. Those are the moments that bind us together. Those moments of leaven that transform us. So the mustard seed and leaven, they're about small things becoming big. They're about being transformed. And then the reading goes on to give three really quick parables about things that appear hidden or that you have to search for that are valuable. The hidden treasure, which was not unusual. You know, there was not Bank of America in Palestine. And so it was not unusual for people to bury their treasure in earthen pots in the ground. But it had to be searched for, had to be found, had to be dug up. After a day's work, it was labor. And it isn't a community built that way. It's hidden, and you unearth it, and you build it, and you create it, and you make it more, and it becomes valuable. It doesn't happen automatically. Because, you know, we each have a story. There's as many reasons for us being here as there are people in this meeting house today. Some of them very similar, but some very different. that searching, that finding. The fourth is about the pearl. Now, in ancient times, it wasn't just that the pearl was valuable. 
as we think of pearls and jewelry. They were also just considered beautiful, and so they were revered, and they were sought out. Don't we seek things out? Don't we seek that which is beautiful and uplifting and meaningful in our lives? Don't we share them? Is there anything more amazing than sitting with people you care about laughing? The more, the better. It somehow binds you together, doesn't it? And the last one is the catch of fish. You know, it wasn't a rod and reel, it was a net. And it took in everything, didn't it? The fish that they wanted to keep and the fish that they didn't really want. And I love this catching of everything with the net as much as I do the mustard seed. They're powerful visuals to think about. And you know, I, you know why we do the ringing of the bowl? It's to get you to be quiet <laughs> and to sit down. Because I love how you are before worship starts. But, you know, there's just this rumble of noise in the meeting house. And half of you are standing here in the aisles and you're talking to each other. Because you found something, didn't you? You were searching. And you're here. Because you wanted to be. You needed to be. So what that says to me, if the kingdom of heaven is the spiritual domain over which God reigns, doesn't that mean that right now in this place, in our lives, every day can be a sanctuary, a place where we search and we find and we connect, hidden in plain sight, not just in this meeting house, but in our very lives. Haven't we all found hidden treasure here in one form or another? Is there anything more valuable, more hidden in plain sight than the treasure of community? From the small to the large, from the individual to the community, we are transformed. You know, one of the greatest blessings that I have of being your interim minister is I get to watch you. I get to watch you search. I get to watch you find. It's so fun watching the new people have, who have been coming here. A little hesitant at first, who wouldn't be? It's a new place. And then I've watched you connect and reach out and be a part of that buzz and noise before worship. I've watched you come to summer, uh, supper, summers, uh, suppers in the summer and go to lunch and tease each other because you found something. And it may be different for all of you. So we search and we find and we share. We go out. I know there are people here today who are here because someone who cares about them says, said, I, I want to share my church with you. That's all. I love this church and I, I, I want to share it with you. And so they came. And some come back. And some don't. And that's OK we all search and we all find. You know, one of the, my favorite heroes, I guess, in contemporary theology was, was the Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And he was interviewed back when things were still pretty rough in South Africa. Apartheid was deeply entrenched and they didn't think there would ever be a solution. 
And in this interview, he remarked, when the white people arrived, we had the land and they had the Bible. They said, let us pray. We opened our eyes and they had the land and we had the Bible. And we got the better of the deal. The kingdom of heaven, like a mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven, like a catch of fish. I think we got the better of the deal in our searching and our finding. We find hidden treasures within and with each other and in community here and out there because we come here and are cared about and connect and we go out into the kingdom of God. What a gift. So thank you. I'll never apologize again that there were so many of you here. <laughs> because I understand why you are. It's why I show up. Not because I have to. Well, I kind of have to. <laughs> but because I love it. Because when I leave here, I'm different than when I came. And week after week, and month after month, and time after time, I am transformed because of that. I'm transformed in how I show up in my own life, how I show up with people I care about, how I show up with people I don't particularly care about. So thank you for searching and finding with all of us. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we give thanks for the mustard seed, for this small seed that can grow large and strong and hearty. We give thanks for all the hidden treasures in our life. We give thanks for the searching hearts we have and for the souls that we bring here that have been found. Go with us, we pray. Amen. <laughs>